Back. Are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Look, this is a very quick introduction because I know no one's here to hear me speak. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, welcome Natalie here to be our presenter. I've actually uh, met Natalie a couple of times. She works here in Australia at, uh, at TAFE. Well, I believe you're still doing information technology teaching. Is that? I'm a I do. I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I teach digital media a few days a week. Okay. At so TAFE. Um, but she's also uh, a, a fantastic innovator, especially around uh, this gamification process. And she sent me some few things to look at that I've been blown away by. So I'm going to let her blow you away, and I will shut up with a, with a great welcome. Please welcome Natalie to the stage. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. They are my adorable children, Lily and Ziggy, and we all live on the north coast of New South Wales, a few hours north of Sydney, Australia. I teach about 10 hours a week and I do e-learning resource development and I've been involved in some emerging technology type trials in different ways of delivering e-learning and I've worked as the Moodle administrator at North Coast TAFE for over the last few years. So I've come from quite a strong technology background but I'm very interested in education and how to motivate learners and that's given me this focus of technology and education and gamification really brings out everything that interests me. So thanks for coming along to this session. I'll start with a, a question and please use the, the chat pod to answer. If I was to say to you one of these statements, which one will most motivate you? So in the, the chat pod, if the first one motivates you, can you write in there that you are an achiever? I will give you a Moodle poster if you ask two questions during this presentation. For the next one, what questions do you have about gamification and education? So if that motivates you, then type in the chat pod explorer. The third one, I bet you can't ask me a question about gamification that I can't answer. So type in the chat pod, you're a killer. And the fourth one, I'd feel really sad if no one asks any questions about gamification, then write in socialiser. And most people are a mix and it does depend on the actual circumstances. So I'm not um, painting you as this person forever. It's more a role that you play in a given circumstance and most of us are capable of playing multiple roles. I'm interested in the variety that we get because we've all come here with a similar interest. I wonder if, if we'd be more inclined to be one than another. We're certainly getting a few explorers coming through. I'm going to talk about these different player types. It's based on Bartle's uh, paper that was written about 20, 1997, about 20 years ago. And he observed people playing Dungeons and Dragons type games and he wasn't particularly interested in what they were doing but more about why they were doing it. So the behaviour that I'm actually looking for here is for people to ask me questions, but you can see that the underlying motivation for people asking me questions is going to be very different. And in trying to put this into practice, it's very hard to second guess what's motivating people. People constantly surprise me. So all of this discussion and debate has led to a poster that I've provided a link to in the top of the chat pod. I'll just type copy and paste in again for you and I'm interested in your opinions on this as experienced educators and technology people who are the most people most familiar with Moodle so this is a great audience to start this conversation and back in the um, the course on IMED I'd love to get some more conversation going about this we've mapped the different player types against different Moodle tools to see how assessment can be more suitable to some people than others. To break it up into four groups, Bartle's player types puts people into either acting or interacting and then they are interested in the environment and the world or they're interested in the people. And if you break that back down to the four categories I spoke of before, the people who like acting on other players fall into this competitive group called the killers. The people who like interacting with other players are 
the socialisers, the ones who like interacting with the environment and the world to collect things are the achievers and the people who like to explore their environment and act on that world are called the explorers. So again, I'll ask you to participate with whatever type you chose in the earlier question. Now, can you match up what type of Moodle activity best suits that player type? So if, if you were interested in the explorer type, now start looking at the Moodle activities and think, which one gives me the greatest, if you're an explorer, which one gives me the greatest freedom? Which one gives me a chance to look around and discover things? Whereas if you're an achiever, you'd be interested in collecting rewards and points and you'd probably prefer a more structured, direct path. The socialisers, that's probably an easy one for most people to get their head around. Interactive, group-based, a chance to nurture and support other people along the way in a collaborative way. And the socially competitive people that are out there, not just to win points, but to beat other people and to get satisfaction from acting on players, what can we offer for that type of motivation and how can we also contain it because it can be a negative dynamic and we wouldn't want to encourage that. Thanks for the feedback there in the chat pod. I'll also offer you an online version of this. Um, I'll just give you a link to just a very quick survey where we've been asking people this question and after you answer it um, you'll be able to see what other people are saying. So that's a Google Doc, where it's a, just a quick survey. So what we've been thinking and I say we in that there's been a few dozen people have already chipped in their opinions and given feedback on this and it's a document that's going to keep on growing. So uh, thanks to everybody else who's contributed their ideas, it's certainly been a group project. And you all being familiar with Moodle as you are would know that if I say forum, it, it's not a tool that would easily just fit into one category, it's a tool that can be used in each of these different categories. And to me that's really the end goal of this process is for us to be able to pick a Moodle tool and use it in a way that applies to all player types. I could give the example of Minecraft or World of Warcraft being really popular games. The reason that they're popular is because they don't just cater for one player type. The game is designed that every player type feels challenged and comfortable. So in designing our courses and our lessons, choosing an activity that's flexible and can have an aspect that relates to each player type is going to be better than choosing an activity that's very specific. You've probably noticed that around assessment time people start disappearing. It's the time they quit, don't turn up, find the hippo and ride off the campus. There's something wrong when that happens. And people have been studying what's different about games to keep people challenged and occupied and in the flow. Because in games you fail, in games you have challenges and yet people are highly motivated to be resilient to go through that process with games. But Jane McGonigal has done scientific research and studies about these processes and what they're finding is that our brain actually lights up in an area called the hippocampus and that's related to long-term behaviour change. There are other areas of the brain that are related to rewards but this area is relates really well to education because that's what we are, we're after. And in this YouTube video you'll see some very inspiring data and examples that using gamification techniques in education will have results that can be quantified and up to 400% is what they're finding is the difference. So I'm not talking about making games in education or serious games, what I'm talking about is taking elements of games and applying that framework to our course design. So the five aspects here that I'm highlighting are we 
are going to build resilience by balancing positive and negative emotions throughout the learning journey, offering learners a feeling of continuous progression, structuring the course so that there's clear goals, rules, feedback and choices, using extrinsic motivation like badges to build intrinsic motivation, and offering status, access, power and stuff in that order. So now I'm going to go through each one of those five points slowly. The first one I mentioned was emotions. I think the reason people hop on their hippos and run out the door around exam time is because there's a potential of a, a train crash happening. Their whole lives depend on the results of this and there's so much weighing on it and if they fail it's just horrendous so they'd rather not even start the, the assessment or the exam. Whereas in a game the risks are there but the rewards are there to balance them. So what we would aim to do in our courses is give people small failures and private failures but give them lots of positive emotions to balance those negative. And Michael your comment there, boredom is a big part of it and over on the right those positive emotions that games offer are curiosity, excitement, awe and wonder and that, counter, that counteracts the boredom. We can structure our courses so that we offer small goals. Big goals lead to fear, restricting access to the cortex, hence failure. Small goals empower. And I will be getting practical about this and the tool guide does get practical and show you how you can use conditional activities to reveal information to people as they go rather than seeing everything in one go and feeling like it's a huge goal. Jane McGonagall talks about the common elements in games because there's such a wide variety of games and the four elements really related to me as an educator that games have goals, rules, offer feedback and voluntary participation and LinkedIn is an example that's not a game but it still offers a very clear goal, there's rules associated with it, people get feedback and there's voluntary options along the way. So we can apply this framework into non-game environments successfully. The Super Better site is very interesting, Leo. I've um, been watching and reading everything I can from Jane McGonagall because she's such a astute lady and her site Super Better is showing that it works. It's not just um, a theory when you can show results. I was a uh, distance learner in 1995, I did a Bachelor of Arts by correspondence full time and they gave me big goals, one or two major assessments, they gave me huge textbooks that they assessed me on one or two pages of and I had to guess which part I was going to be tested on and for someone who's got every reason to be confident in passing an exam based on my history, I still hated the process. I had to wait a long time for feedback and that feedback was always external and it was very teacher centred and I did love doing that degree and I'm not, I don't want to be too critical of that process because it worked for me and I got a lot from it but I really wonder in 2015 if that type of structure will work for our learners and what, what could replace it. So this table, I'm going through these slides fairly quickly because there's, I, I prefer to get onto the practical side and you can come back and read the information later. But if we start looking at the Moodle tools that are available to us to implement these features, the markers complete checkboxes available from Moodle 2.1 I think are a very clear way of, show, of giving people a goal and then that box comes checked either automatically or manually so they know that when they've reached a series of mini goals. The grade book is also a very powerful way of giving people that clear goal of what is expected of them and have they achieved it yet. I've experimented with a number of plugins which I'll, I'll show you. The progress bar in Moodle is 
usually a, a series of chips and crosses and I just replaced those graphics with a star very simply and have turned that into a star based system and I think that gives people a really, it gives them a navigation system and a feedback system and a goal setting system so it's my favourite plugin. The second one about rules, challenges, obstacles. We, when we start a course we're often wondering when are things due, how can I submit my work and that's what most of the conversation between learners and teachers are about. So we can use our technology tools to make those boundaries very clear and then the student will feel safe and comfortable that they're complying. The lesson module is very versatile in applying a timer and not allowing you to go through to a different level until you've done something at a previous level. But I'm aware that it takes a lot of time to set up a lesson. I'm trying to make this practical to all course designers, not just those who have the luxury of being paid to sit down and design a course. The collapsed topic course format that Gareth demonstrated yesterday, I think offers a quicker way of achieving this because you can set up multiple columns in a course I'll demonstrate soon. I've got three columns and I can hide everything and people just work through the level that they're at and it becomes, it, it's revealed as they progress and that gives them levels which is one of the key features of games and the collapsed topic can give you a nice visual layout to achieve that. Probably the area that I see we could improve the most from all the Moodle courses that I've created and seen other people is the way that we give feedback along the way. The new completion block goes to a long way towards doing this where people can get some visual indication that they've actually finished. You can use an image that's revealed once they've met certain criteria and that gives them some positive emotions and celebration that they've made it. Badges are a great way of giving people feedback that that behaviour was what was expected of them and they achieved that goal. There's a plugin called the Moo Profile Box that will display a learner's profile if you put their username and we use it to show the teacher of the course but I realise we can also pick a winner each week based on different behaviours so it could be the person who got the most XYZ, the person who was the most helpful the person who's been on time for the last 10 days straight, whatever behaviour you're trying to encourage within the classroom, you can then reward by giving them status within the class using the Moodle profile block. Moodle on its, in its own right offers people more autonomy than traditional classrooms and that people can read and learn as, at times that suit them, so it's already on a winning path there. The use of groups and self-selecting groups and then getting content based on those groups is um, another easy thing to implement that, that I can demonstrate. And I'm just reading the um, Lynn's comments there, that's great feedback and I, I do think that paper based feedback is um, is complementary to technology and because we're using an online learning environment we, we shouldn't under underestimate posters and even having a data projector on every morning and having something on the board that shows some visual feedback to people in different ways so that Moodle becomes a part of the strategy rather than being the strategy. One of the found, founding principles of gamification is a motivation loop. So we've talked about different motivators and once you've given people some motivation then the action is performed and then the reward is given. And that sounds so simple and it is, but if you put pen to paper when you're designing a course, just try to map that out. You can start with the action if you like, what do you want the student to do, what motivation can you offer them and then what reward will they receive. We're talking about rewards, Gabe Zickerman has a, a framework, SAPS, S-A-P-S, status, access, power and stuff. So he places badges and tangible rewards at the bottom of that scale and what, he's, what he says people really respond to is status. If other people think they're cool, that is the ultimate reward. Access is highly important. 
having a VIP section of your course that's only available to people who do X, Y, Z is a very um, effective way of motivating people, giving people power to do certain things will also motivate people. Yeah, Foursquare is, um, it puzzles me why and how anybody would get involved in Foursquare, but it has been so hugely popular. And these readings that I'm giving you, and that I, I've found through doing a MOOC on gamification last year with um, Professor Kevin Werbach, they gave us many, many examples of how these very basic frameworks are being used by marketing and working, and they certainly can be applied in education. Well, congratulations, Leah, well done. So I'm hoping that some of this is um, making more sense to you than others, because I, I just couldn't help but going deep, because I've been fascinated. I'll have to jot down your name. We can have a chat about it. One of the problems with giving people badges is how many badges do they want and are you creating a scenario where the donkey always wants the carrot and we're not dealing with donkeys, we're dealing with intelligent humans. So what we need to understand is it's really the intrinsic motivations that we're after and we're only using the carrots to build intrinsic motivation. So let's talk more about intrinsic motivation. Using the self-determination theory, it can be summarised as autonomy, mastery and relatedness. So how can Moodle offer these things to our learners? Mastery is feeling that you've achieved something, that feeling within yourself that you've really conquered and changed and you are now competent. And in the adult sector that I work in, competency-based assessment is meant to give people that clear feeling that they are successful. So formative assessment and self-assessment checkpoints can help in a course. Autonomy is hugely important. And in the keynote yesterday about MOOCs, it's one of the, the comments was about users being able to modify their own interfaces and take content within courses to other courses. It's about them feeling like they're in control. Now, educational environments really do um, have a long way to go and technology is going to play, play a role in changing that. The relatedness one is that I think we can do a lot about now. It's about providing activities within project-based learning or scenarios or simulations using constructivist learning techniques. So there's some, a lot more references here for you to read if, you, if you'd like to get deeper into this. But I'll, a quote here is that a positive feedback loop ultimately turns the gamified activity into something intrinsically motivating for the player. So as an, an example, Julian posted the other night, anybody have an idea about badges for iMoot? So I got to thinking about that and I realised I have to really define a behaviour first. What would the iMoot, what behaviour do we want to encourage? And it's really about being connected and sharing ideas. So the technology tool that um, came to mind was Twitter. So how do you encourage people to use Twitter? If they've never used it, it's a different scenario to people who do use it. So we want people to follow some people on Twitter. We want them to tweet using a tag. And then we issue badges based on those specific behaviours. And it's not really the, the badge that we're after. What we want is for people to get involved with Twitter and experience that it's so good that from then on they will keep on tweeting without being given a badge every time that they do it. So it becomes an intrinsic reward. Just briefly jumping back to the four player types, with game designers they, they actually design for those different types and this person's advice, Andres Machesuisquiz, is to make it social, so work for the socialisers first, make it meaningful, give people some freedom, that's your explorers, 
then integrate the well thought out reward system so that's your achievers even though they may be higher in numbers with, with our Moodle courses we can follow that, make it social, make it meaningful, give people freedom and also rewards in that order. This Andre has a um, far more extensive player type system um, built up from Bartle's player types which I absolutely love and I think it's far more relevant to what we're doing but it was just too hard to fit it all on a poster and too hard to explain but I'd encourage you to have a closer look at that diagram later and see that the pink are the external motivators and the green are the intrinsic motivation. Um, for the people who went to the gamification course you'd um, recognise this and there's a book being released called Gamify for the Win and the framework that they offer is to work through the six G's of defining the business objectives, the target behaviours, describing the players, devising activity loops, don't forget the fun and then deploy appropriate tools. That's a book I'd certainly recommend to read. Leah, can I invite you to just make a little comment um, about um, anything you like or that in particular if you've just finished the, the gamification course? And how you think that applies? I'll leave him to, to type. Perhaps he's typing a very long answer, or perhaps he's run away and not hearing me. That'd be great, Leo. Please do. I don't have a button to unmute your mic for you. Perhaps Julian, you could help out. Nope. <clears throat> it's not working. Well, let me know if you can get it working, Leo. Oh, hang on, you've got a button now. You seem to have a microphone. You want to try talking, Leo? We may be able to hear you. Yeah, I think, I hope my mic's working now. Um, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Sorry. One of the things that uh, I learned from uh, working with often in that profession is that it actually requires a lot of structure, a lot of support, a lot of planning. Um, and you sort of really need to deconstruct it and look at it from a sort of an immersive type perspective rather than just doing what um, most of sort of that superficial rhetoric is that EBL. Well, most of that stuff is extremely exciting. I think what our, what our role as educators are is to use that. You know, if, if you're looking at that, uh, that 10% is part of the structure and really as important as part of it. So that's my. Thank you very much for that. It, it is certainly a lot more than what would meet the eye when I first jumped into this topic. But just to go back over those points before I move out to the, the Moodle sites is as educators we, we want to build up resilience in our learners by balancing positive and negative emotions throughout the journey. We want to offer them a feeling of continuous progression so that they are working towards mastery. We want to give them clear goals, rules, feedbacks and choices. We use extrinsic motivation to build up intrinsic motivation that we've targeted and we offer them status, access, power and stuff.
Julian has some um, and actually was one of the people who inspired me originally down this road and Sarah Thornycraft with her Moodle dailies is another one and just trying even the tiniest bits of these in my classroom with real life people it works people do react differently and engage differently so if you can see very small there's a tiny little hat there and if you click on that Julian's embedded music and it it's just so effective to use different media in the course and the lyrics to the songs about the Vietnam War in the 70s are educational in their own right and he's provided a, a demonstration of this at this URL and you can actually experience that for yourself. Mini Stocker is another uh, developer who's made a pirate course that was quite fun and I believe he's doing an iMOOC presentation on that so you might want to grab that recording if you didn't make the live one and he's provided me with a demo course I'm sure he's provided it with you as well but I just wasn't sure if I should include it here and Google Moodle dailies by Sarah Thornycraft for her blog about what she did I had um, something in my head that I had to get out after doing so many corporate courses it's a, it's a bit playful and fun but had to do it. It's a Wizard of Oz journey down a yellow brick road and I'll show the actual live version of that um, now. But I'll just finish this presentation and then I'll encourage anyone to turn their mic on and actually have a chat about this and we'll move off to, to talk about the motivation guide and get your feedback. We started a, a LinkedIn group to hold these conversations and share resources so have a look for Moodle for Motivation in LinkedIn or find me on Twitter to keep this conversation going and as Leo said it does take a lot of strategy and planning and sometimes it's just nice to have somebody else to, to bounce ideas off. I'm just attempting to share my screen now. While I'm waiting for this to go through, would anybody like to just pop a chat in if they have um, been trying any of these techniques in in their practice and what results they're having? No, I can't see the chat pod so somebody's going to have to find that microphone button and unmute their mic and let me know if you can hear me. So I'll wait for somebody to confirm that you can see the screen. Yeah, I can see it. Um, no worries. Great. Okay, so this is the um, Wizard of Oz playful course and I'm in teacher mode so you can see there's a graphic at the top and that only becomes visible once the journey has been completed and I've just squashed it up so that you can see better. I've used the collapsed topics format with three columns and the sneaky thing is to put double or triple graphics so there's an M with one, there's an M with two and then there's an M with three characters and as you complete given activities I turn things on and off so that the correct one is visible. I, I came up with a strategy that you can jump in to level three if you like. You don't have to do level one and two. And then to move on to the letter O, you have to have completed level three in M. And that's a big decision you need to make is what pathways are you going to block and allow. And the concept of a boss fight is what I base this on. Is that I encourage my learners to start in the deep end and then go back and learn how to paddle in the areas where they need to and fast track if they don't. The lesson gave me the option of saying that you're not allowed to start this lesson until you've completed that lesson and it also let me put a timer on so that you could add a playful element 
it was a little hard to know how long to give people because some people would take a short while and others would, would take a long time. So that was a little bit harder to make those decisions about what would, what would work for everybody. I've tried to use pathways in the lessons so that you're not seeing content that doesn't apply to you. Uh, you're welcome to enrol in this course if you go to uh, the website which is md.muju.com.au and go to the login page and register. Uh, I'll make sure that you get a login and you can actually participate in this course as a learner or you can enrol as a teacher and just see the inner workings of it. It was tricky though that some of the good content was was in these basics and I think by letting people jump to the end they were missing out on my earlier content. So I just had to put some wording in there saying, okay, smarty pants, you want to fast track, fine, but there's some good stuff back there if you'd like to go back and try to use my narrative to point out what was available. So I'll leave you to explore that course on your own time and I'll just demonstrate a few other features I spoke about. So this is the, the Moo profile bo block where you pick a user's name and the information will come up and you get to put some text in. This is the progress bar which acts as navigation. When I click on that I will actually go to that activity and once I've completed it it becomes a yellow star so I'm getting immediate feedback that I've done something and I've succeeded, which seems small but I, I think it makes a learner's day just a little bit brighter to see ticks in boxes and see stars and it doesn't have to make it childish or condescending to offer that. I've used conditional activities so that there's a label here with a password so I'm actually guiding their behaviour that they must tick this box, they see the password and then they can go to the groups and choose what group they want to belong to. I like the concept of um, proving that you're worthy. If, if you want to say that you're in the advanced group, fine, and we'll put you back into the earlier groups if need be. So people can choose their groups of novice or or advanced and then get the content that relates to that. I'll just jump back to the normal role there. So anybody's welcome to put their microphone on and ask questions at this point if you'd like me to go slower or explain something else. One of the things I did was just put in a simple URL to the gradebook. Students often can't find their results and they don't know how they're going. When you start a course you can um, apply different roles to people. I'll see if I can find it here. So instead of it saying student and teacher you can change it to player and coach or any other terminology quite easily. You can see there that I've changed these, these rules. Giving people status of being a group manager is very rewarding. These are the groups that people belong to and these are the, the roles. So they're fairly easy things that people can do in Moodle without having the admin access. So moving on to the poster, you can see the four types at the top there. I'll just position it like that. So we started with the assignment type and we we're thinking that we'll give a green box to achievers because they, they like the structure, they like the clear guidelines, they would love to be given a rubric and a marking guide that's just a straight path. I know what I need to do and I'm going to get it done, head down the quiet achievers in the room. Whereas the socialisers may enjoy a chat based assessment where they have to work in small groups and open up a discussion and that chat gets saved and submitted as evidence of what, um, what they've achieved for that lesson. Giving people choices, 
is going to interest the explorers and the socialisers, whereas the achievers might be thinking, I'd rather get, get on with it. And we're not going to have time to, to go through everything on this list. The, the one that I ended up giving the, the number one award is the most versatile is the forum. And there's some tips there on how you can make the forum more appealing to each type. So adding rating and giving points will get the achievers to buy in. Adding the forum posts as a series of formative assessment activities where people can go off and discover something and then bring that information back to the group keeps your explorers interested. The forum by nature is going to interest a socialiser. And for killers, giving the, the ratings is, um, is going to in, encourage them to try to beat other people. And the other thing you can do is put people into groups and then that group icon, if you put an image in with the group, will appear next to their name. So whenever they write a forum post, it'll come up a little smiley picture or cranky picture or whatever picture you like. So by you could say once you've put in 10 posts, you're going to be in this group. If you put in a post of this amount of quality, I'll put you in the masters group. So they get that status next to them and they feel that they are of higher status than other people. So they're motivated to keep on using the forum. I, I believe I have got that in my Moodle course as an example and I've provided an MBZ backup file of that course I just showed you so you can download it and put it on your own system with these features already, already set up as examples for you. The glossary with simple question and answer entries from students that are rated is, is really quite flexible. So it came in as the second best tool to use these gamification techniques. I also, um, being a Moodle admin, straight away started thinking about all of the different core Moodle tools and plugins that we can use to gamify the Moodle system. So this second page is tips on what Moodle offers us. So using activity reports and markers, complete boxes, and then I've got instructions in there on what you need to do to use those. And I've basically covered those in my presentation, so this is a, a poster format of, of that information. And for site administrators, there's a list there of system level changes that you can make to implement these features. So I'd like to come back to the room now and um, stop sharing my desktop. Um, Michael, your question, can you change a player's role for particular groups? Not sure what you mean by that. Are you talking about the killer socialiser role? So I'm not actually using them in Moodle. Oh, no, I was just thinking if um, you, know, you had some sort of activity and people could choose to go into a group and they may have different role functions once they got into the group that they chose that you could alter in Moodle. But you know, permission to create activities or whatever it might be? Well, the, I've only just installed that plugin called self-selection for groups. So you set up a choice and you say you're a cat lover or a dog lover and then immediately on them making that choice, they get put into the cat group or the dog group. And I liked that because it's not me doing it. As a teacher, I look for lazy ways of doing these things because when you've got a class full of people, you don't want to remember to go in and change it. So yeah, I, I quite often have a group set up where I challenge people to play a different role to what they normally do. So somebody's a note taker, somebody's a timekeeper, somebody's blah, blah, blah. So I can see that using those um, that Moodle plugin, I could switch that around and then they could get their instructions of what your role is in this group for today. Yes, Leo, you can then set the permissions for the group. Oh, sorry, Lynn, I'll, I'll sort it out. I'll make that Moodle behave. I'll find you on iMVIT and make sure that you get, get a chance to get in. 
Yeah, that's an interesting um, way of using it, Michael. I hadn't thought about that. You're welcome, Trish. Great to have you here. Somebody's asked, was it difficult to change the progress bar to a star? Um, no, it wasn't really. Um, and I had to do it again on a different server. So I actually changed all my, saved all my changes to GitHub and posted it. So I'm just trying to find that link. So you can just jump onto GitHub and take my code if, yeah, there it is there. I'll just go back and post that in. It's always good to do something new, so getting onto GitHub and pretending I was a programmer was a bit of a mastery feeling for me. So it it was a um oh, hang on, didn't get the link. Um I did have to change some CSS so that the the stars actually fitted and change the graphic. So they were the very minor changes that I made. There you go. Hi Gavin, thanks for joining us. Better late than never. I've got no idea what time it is in your world. Um, I did say thank you earlier to all the people who contributed to getting the poster finalised and Gavin was one of those and you may recognise the poster looks very much like the one that Gavin did recently and Joyce Seitzinger did the original one and they were based on Bloom's taxonomy and for me coming into Moodle a few years ago of all the things that I read and learnt about Moodle that poster just got information in my head so quickly about how I was seeing Moodle being used in classrooms to how it could potentially be used. So um, that's where I was inspired to take what I got from this gamification MOOC and again break, break it down into categories that hopefully are memorable and those four frameworks that we showed you of interacting versus acting and players versus world will just give you some, a quick reminder to try to see the world through your learner's eyes. Thank you, Gavin. That's great. I I have got a um, a final version, which I'll just try to make sure I've got the. There's a Bitly link floating around to the draft version we were all looking at, and I changed it to something else. I'll just quickly find that. Yeah, Michael, I don't, I don't think I've actually given you the, the links to download that course yet. I'll find that too. So I'm still working on this. I was supposed to have it all finished by now, but, you know, life doesn't always happen. But I will get that done. And I'm presenting a 25-minute version of this. God knows how I'm going to cut it down at Moodle Moot in Melbourne with more of a focus on the Moodle gradebook. And so by in a few weeks' time, I'll have a lot more sample courses on my site with um, customising the gradebook. And again, I'd like to make those courses available for download because configuring gradebook is really quite time consuming and it's something that you can easily share with other people and take the zip file, upload it and then add your own activities over the top that have all of the scales set up ready to go. Um, Farhan, the, my reason um, for changing the progress block was I work with adult learners and ticks and crosses would be offensive to a lot of our learners. And I also found it was, um, an, it was a negative message being, being sent with a cross. And there's a lot about gamification where those, uh, those small 
things make a big difference. If a learner comes into their environment and they straight away see 10 crosses, the killers might go for it and say, oh, I'm going to beat this system and oh, I can do better than that, whereas other people will be really discouraged by it. And the, the words that we use in our courses have the same powerful effect on people, trying to get a group of words together, uh, like congratulations, you've finished, well done, and having those in your narrative just to give that positive feedback. It's like when the teacher walks around the room and just looks over your shoulder and makes a comment that's positive. It changes the way that you feel and it changes your motivation. So in our Moodle courses, adding a bit of flavour and personality and emotion will give it, is, is a gamification element. Um, Gavin, yeah, I'll, I'll certainly, when I get them up to a standard that I can <laughs> be prouder of, I will. Uh, yes, I can do that. It's natalie at muju.com. And if any of you caught my session yesterday um, with Carrie Vitti from New York, Last year, a group of about 20 of us started talking about keeping this collaboration going throughout the year because we all love this iMOOC atmosphere. So it's taken us a while to get it off the ground, but we've got a platform ready to go called MoodleForEducators.com. So I'll be um, contributing a lot of content to that and I'd love to start a, a working group around gamification in Moodle. And also being more of a techie, I am interested in um, embedding games within Moodle, so I'd like to talk to some of the more technical minded people about that. I've been using a program called Construct2 which creates HTML5, so I got one of their tutorials that was a treasure map and converted it to an Aboriginal, Australian Aboriginal version where you go along a river and you collect totems as you build up your skills in digital media and if you collect all six totems you'll give them the deep water shark totem which means a lot to the people in our area and I've embedded that inside my Moodle course so it just looks like a part of the framework and I'm just having a quick look through um, who's here that might be able to help me with this. I'm having trouble that when it's behind the firewall that it's the pop-up windows go berserk because this it's hosted on a gaming site and it authenticates against Facebook to issue badges. So it works fine unless you're at TAFE and it doesn't work. So I'm a bit sad that I can't put it inside my Moodle course. If anybody's got any magic answers to that, then I don't think there are any magic answers, except get everybody to bring their own mobile devices with their own internet connections. Um, the gradebook really needs to be more visible uh, that's one of the realisations I've had in this process is it's, it's at the back end of the course and it really should be at the front end of the course. Yeah, Lynn, I'd say if you're behind the firewall, but this is just quite a specific element that I'm talking about. It's not Moodle course itself. So what I'll, I'll do is I'll have to host it externally and link link to it from the Moodle course and have it open in its own window, but I really did want to embed it in the course as a navigation and motivational tool for students. Ah, lovely Gavin, we've been looking for that. We switched this year to having a Moodle course per unit instead of her qualification and the learners really missed seeing their grades and the overview report just didn't cut it. So that's great to know. There's another presentation I made. I have. I don't know if I've missed it yet. Somebody's um, built a new block that is gamification. Fantastic. I think teachers would um, put more time and effort into the gradebook if if it was more visible to the students and motivated the students. Does anybody know the name of that other session that, that I've spotted? And I'm sure you'd all be interested in it too. Uh, 
And Dot, I haven't really explored much down that road of plugins in Gradebook. Can you give me some more examples? Um, it's a new, it's a new block that this person's developed. Thomas, somebody. Julian, do you know somebody called Thomas that's doing an iMet session on gamification? Gavin, I'm going to have to rewrite my poster already because we didn't know about that block and it's beautiful. The great thing about publishing electronically is it's never finished. It just keeps on changing and getting better and I don't have to republish it. Okay, so Dot, it may not be appropriate for you to make comments about about what you're doing. Oh, sorry, I didn't cut you off there, Natalie. I just thought I wanted to quickly jump in before too many people disappeared and obviously say a, a, a thank you. And sadly, I'm moderating two sessions. I'm kind of jumping between both. Uh, I did see the Vietnam course pop up for a second there. Um, as always, a fantastic content on behalf of IMEC. Thank you for presenting. Um, are you going to be putting these slides in the course or up on SlideShare or? At all? Yeah, I did upload one earlier, but my fonts look terrible, so I've changed all of them, and I'll hopefully be able to delete it from where it says to presenters upload their presentations, and I'll give you this version to put on SlideShare, certainly. And okay. we we're just wondering, do you know somebody called Thomas doing an iMoot session on a gamification block that he's made? Um, no, that doesn't ring a bell, to be honest. Um, not that I'm saying it's not happening, but I certainly haven't seen it. Uh, let me have a quick look. I've got the program open in front of me. Yeah, do a control F for Thomas, see if we can hunt him down, because I think everybody here would be interested in what, what he's doing too. Hi, uh, yes, yeah, Thomas Wilson. Um, he's presenting uh, using gamification to increase course engagement. Um, he's from the US. He is due to present. Uh, this doesn't help in getting it in Sydney time. Yeah, on um, Saturday at 5:30 a.m., which means we've missed him. He, he did that this morning. So view the recording. Okay. The recording will be there. Yeah. Yeah, and Gavin's just told us about another new block. I know. I just said I hadn't heard so, about it either. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, my, one of my purposes was to pull together all of these good resources into one spot and then maintain it. So we'll all keep in touch and keep doing that. Oh, look, I'll be joining the LinkedIn group if I'm not there already. I don't think I'm in that group. Yeah. So and then if there's a group of us who want to try to work outside of Moodle in the HTML5 area and embed it back into Moodle, uh, there's some white label products coming out and through this gamification MOOC I've got some fantastic networks of real game developers so we're trying to to use technology to build this in even more so stay in tune with what else we'll come up with over the next year or two. Well look I've been watching the Twitter feed people have been constantly tweeting from what's coming out of your session thank you very much for coming to iMoot again um, certainly becoming a regular at this point and uh, hopefully we'll see you again next year thank you very much. I hope so too thanks Julian. Yeah, that's a fantastic blog on the I Teach with Moodle. He's recorded. Uh, if if you need to go, please go. But I'll, I'll just quickly summarise. Or, or Nadiv, do you want to grab the mic and summarise that blog if you're familiar with it? Anybody else want to grab a mic? So I'll just keep chatting. That blog. Uh, this teacher has set up a control group and a gamified group and he's running the same course with two different groups of students and he's analysing every click and every view through Google Analytics and he's going to come back with some really good data on the difference in behaviour once gamification elements have been implemented and he's done a great job of implementing all of his ideas and then documenting the responses each week and I haven't read the last week or two's entries so please follow, follow along that journey as it's unravelling.
So Doc, getting back to your point, the checklist module, so you're saying that that doesn't show up in the gradebook and that's a problem with using plugins. And the checklist plugin allows students to add their own tasks. Hmm, I like that. I wonder if, because the checklist plugin was developed before we had the markers complete boxes, I wonder if there's some way that you can use core little features to achieve the same same goal, but if they're actually setting their own tasks, it would be, be hard to do anything more than task one, task two, task three. Oh, fantastic. Somebody's taking a tool and using it in a different scenario. Um, one of the most powerful things I did in the classroom was make one of my students a teacher. And I changed the label to project manager and said, there you go, that's actually your Moodle course and his eyes lit up and his mates looked rather sad and I didn't expect it to be so appealing to somebody to have the ability to change a Moodle course and his job was to keep a track of the project that we were doing and it was only a very simple Moodle course, I kind of half did it and he had to go and fill in the blanks and the closest you can get to that without handing over a teacher role to a student is to use a, a wiki and set up some sort of structure in the wiki and then they can add their own comments and tasks in there and it's editable. Thanks Leo, it'd be good to keep in touch and enjoy talking to people who've got similar interests to me. So again, Gavin, you're talking about the gradebook adding a custom event in. Great, yep, that's, that's certainly where this future is heading and the other thing I've experimented in these um, technology trials is Tin Can Appy, uh, this treasure map that, that we built, we did put in some JavaScript in the headers and set up a learning record store in SCORM Cloud, so we're getting learners records being pushed off to this learning record store and I've also got a a bookmark that's got JavaScript that when people go to different sites they click on the I learned this button and it sends it off to the learning record store. So the next step I'd like to do is to get Moodle acting as the learning record store which somebody has kindly provided a, a module for and it, it worked and it's all set up, I just lack the time to put it into place. Um, for the learning record store, Nadev, is that what you're asking? If you Google Tin Can Appy and Scorm Cloud, you'll find all of the resources and the templates to, to do it. And you can set up 10 users for free in the system. Um, I'll, I'll just see if I can quickly find it. You have to actually do the game to get to the last page and when you get to the last page called completed.htm, that's when if you look in the code you'll see the JavaScript in there. So that's the treasure map. Um, Um, I don't know if we're talking about the same tin can module in progress. The one that I, I tried was um, a modification of the SCORM module. I'd love to have the link and see if there's more out there.
Oh, great. I'll certainly keep in touch with you because I'm really pushing my boundaries and figuring out what to do with it. But I, what I can see forming in my fuzzy little vision is, is what Gavin was saying earlier, is tracking what people are doing and getting that into a gradebook or a learning record store in, in a more natural, organic way as evidence of what people know is, is going to be more motivating than our current systems. But I am going to have to head off soon. Thank you very much for stimulating conversation. So join the, um, the LinkedIn group and share the rest of your resources as we keep on discovering things. Actually, I just looked at that link. It's a different one to what I tried. That's great. I'll try that too. Great. Okay, I'll test that out. I'm just reading your comments, Gavin. That sounds really, really like what we need to do. Yeah. I've um, got into Google Ads for Education in the last few months and I'm quite a fan of Google. I even went to the headquarters in Sydney for a, a GAFE meeting a few weeks ago and we bought 10 Google Nexus 7-inch tablets to use in this trial to see if we can transform traditional classrooms into mobile-enabled classrooms. And it's just amazing how much technology is there for education that I didn't quite realise and use. So I'm going to be looking more at what Google's releasing. But anyway, I shall have to go and collect my lovely children. So thank you all very much. Thanks, Gavin. Appreciate your support coming along. See you all again somewhere.